Hello YouTubers, here's another short, hopefully short anyways, repair video. Uh, on this video we, we are repairing the HP L1750 LCD monitor. It's a 15 inch monitor, it's probably, oh I'm guessing, maybe 10 years old. But, it was given to me for free and, well I can't I cannot pass up free stuff, so. Anyways, I've taken the unit apart. As always, you take the bezel off the front of the case, you pry it off with a screwdriver. <coughs> and like I found on this board, is the uh, most common thing. Right here, where my thumb is. Uh, capacitors were bad. I got one, two, three, four capacitors that are bad. You can tell they're bad by the puffed out top on them, or the rounded top, or the dome top, or the curved top. But these parts in general are fairly inexpensive, anywhere from 25 cents to, I don't know, maybe $2 at most. Um, like I said in my other videos, if you've watched any of them, uh, the hardest part is taking this thing apart, the cases on these monitors. That's about the hardest part to that, or to this is. But, uh, I'm going to remove these parts and, uh, hopefully it'll work. So, let's break out my trusty desoldering iron. You can get these from Radio Shack for about $12.99 plus tax. Depending on where you live, well, I'm sh you can order them online. Uh, I'm guessing it's shipping's probably five, six bucks at most. But if you have a Radio Shack low, you know, close to you, and you work on, you want to, if you want to work on electronics, or you do, you know, this is really, very, very handy to have. Basically, press in the bulb, and it's really hard to see on video, but basically you press the, heat it up, heat the iron up of course, you plug it in, leave, let it sit for about five minutes. Basically, you're taking the desoldering iron and you're. Let me see if I can find something to point with. This is the back of the, you know, the circuit board. Right where my knife point is, just a little pad of solder, right there, and right there. You're going to heat those up with a desoldering iron and suck it off. It just sucks it right off there. And the part will come right out. Of course, there's a pad there, a pad there, a pad there, and a pad there. Um, it's really not hard to do. If you use a desoldering bulb or desoldering pump or whatever they call them, the cheap ones, you're gonna have a lot of a lot more trouble. But the desoldering iron is the way to go. Let me stop the video here and we'll suck out the rest. Okay, well, we're back to the video now. As I said, the capacitors were bad. This is one of the bad capacitors. My camera isn't the greatest, but you can kind of tell just by looking at the top of this capacitor that, uh, yeah, it's rounded, it's curved, it's puffed out. 
Sometimes it's just very, very slight. But if it's even puffed out just a little bit, it's pretty much bad. I can guarantee that it's bad. Now here's a good one. Of course, once again, it's hard to tell by the with the crappy camera. But uh, this one is a this one is not bad. So I stand it on here. Kind of well, stands up straight. As were that one, no, it's wobbly. <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't really matter if they're bad, they're curved or domed at top at the top. So pull those suckers out and replace them. <clears throat> but uh, you know, if you got a monitor that you find in the garbage, or you have a monitor that monitor that went bad, and you don't want to buy a new monitor, this is the cheapest route to go. It's not that hard to take that apart. I mean, what do you have to lose, really? So your monitor's broke. You don't have a monitor. You're sitting there at your at your desk, and you're going, "Oh, I wish I had a monitor." Well, okay, it's broke. So take it apart. If you break something, well, it's already broke anyway. So what the heck? You know, unplug the power to it. Get out your screwdrivers. You know, if you got to sit on your living room floor. Put down a sheet or something or whatever. Don't want to get dirt all over or dust. You know, set it down on the floor, tear it apart. Get yourself a little coffee can or a glass cup. Put the screws in it. Get out a piece of paper, notepad, whatever. You know, when you go to take it apart, write down where what goes where. You know, if you took down a took out a certain screw. Take out the screws. Write it down, the wiring, the harnesses, the plugs inside the monitor. Write down the colors, you know, what socket they go in. You know, get yourself a fine tip marker. You know, write number one, two, three, four, the colors, the wires. You know, just keep track of what you're taking apart. That way when you go to put it back together, you won't be lost. That's the biggest mistake people make. They take something apart, which is the easy thing to do. They put it back together and they're like, oh, where does this go? I get that message. I get messages like that all the time. People ask me, well, where does the wire go? Well, I really don't know. That's something I worked on a year ago, so to recall that out of my memory, well, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go tear apart my, my monitors or whatever to go look inside a monitor for you to see where which wires go where. It's not going to happen, so keep track of that. But, you know, just like when you take the parts out, the capacitors out of the board, well, for one, capacitors have a positive and negative. On the back of the board here, where the solder traces are, there's actually a plus and minus. Positive is plus, negative is minus. On a capacitor, you have a, a gray side with a little negative stripe down the side or marking. And the other side, you know, the other side is, of course, positive with two leads. One positive and one negative. That's how all capacitors are. Of course, they don't all look like this. There are other, you know, other types. Some capacitors have a lead coming out of this side and a lead coming out of this side. But it's not the case. <coughs> but anyways, this monitor was free. And I took it apart, and, well, I suspected that the capacitors were bad, and I am going to replace them. So, let me stop the video here, and we'll solder in the new capacitors. Okay, well, we're back to the soldering part. This is a soldering iron. Not a soldering gun, but a soldering iron. This is just a, oh, I think it's a 20 water course you know the higher the wattage the more heat you transfer to the circuit or the part you're soldering in you know depending on what you're soldering you don't want to use too much heat because well you can burn up the component 20 watts 15 20 watts is about what I use for most small circuits of course if you're getting into really small circuits or small parts surface mount you're going to want to use a little less <clears throat> 
because you can really burn up stuff quick. But anyway, this is just a cheap Radio Shack, seven dollar soldering iron. I usually buy two or three, two or three of these at a time. But uh, just a couple tips on soldering. When you get a new soldering iron, of course the tip is all fancy and shiny. Um, you're going to take your solder, your rosin core solder, your whatever they call it nowadays. It's not even lead, it's lead free crap, which I hate. I like the old fashioned stuff, but you're going to take your tip and coat it and let it heat up and you know, kind of stick on there and they're going to wipe it off. I usually use an old coffee can and just kind of scrape it off. If you have a wire brush, you can shine the tip up and keep repeating that process a couple times so your tip is tinned. When you're soldering, you always tin what you're working on. Wiring, you pre-tin your wire. You pre-tin your tip. You always make sure your tip is clean. Scrape it. Okay? Solder is very important, though. There are many different kinds of solder. This stuff is some old-fashioned lead. Well, I kind of had a technical course. problem with the camera. The battery died. But anyways, I recharged the battery and I'm going to finish this uh, little uh, video, I guess you could call it. <laughs> anyways, I was talking about soldering. This is a 15 watt soldering iron. As I was saying, when you get a new soldering iron, the tip will be nice and shiny. You want to take some solder and coat the tip with the solder. Kind of repeat the process until it's tinned, until the solder actually sticks to the tip of the soldering iron. And you want to wipe it off, scrape it off, whatever. If you have a little tiny wire brush, you can kind of shine the, the tip a little bit and coat the tip get the black oxides off the tip of the soldering iron. Just repeat that process a couple times, but always make sure your tip of your soldering iron is clean and covered with solder, or tinned as they call it. <clears throat> and the same goes for the desoldering iron too. When you get that, you want to coat the tip of the so desoldering iron with solder. Make sure it's tinned, that way you have a good flow of solder and, uh, you know, there's no oxides forming on the tip makes sure, it'll it'll make things easier when you're soldering trust me now as far as solder goes well this is just a regular spool of uh, rosin core solder this is lead solder this is some older stuff I have but I actually prefer to use a lead solder most of the solder sold today is either well Silver solder, which is kind of expensive, doesn't actually have a whole lot of silver in it, but and the other kind is lead free solder, which is the most common. But, anyways, the solder you don't want to use is this kind of solder. This is plumbing solder, this is for working with copper pipe. This is not good for soldering electronics. So, if you have a roll of this or spool of this lying around, do not use it. It's just not meant for electronics. But anyways, I kind of went, well, I fast forwarded in this repair video. I actually fixed the monitor. The problem was the capacitors. And uh, that whole repair cost me maybe a dollar fifty. I replaced three capacitors actually four capacitors three of the same value and one of a different value so four capacitors replaced on the board and it was an easy fix the hardest part was taking apart the monitor itself which only took me five minutes so what does that tell you anyways this is the HP L1750 LCD monitor if you have one that's broken and it doesn't even have to be an HP. Any LCD, LED monitor, they're pretty much built the same way. Uh, nine times out of ten, if it's not powering on or it's starting to flicker or takes a while to turn on, it's the capacitors inside the monitor. 
So, take it apart. What do you have to lose? Nothing, really. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.